subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 17th of February. India's foreign ministry says no immediate evacuation of its nationals from Ukraine amid tensions with Russia. Pakistani minister asks public to use less fuel amid outrage over price hike. And U.S. not backing armed opposition to Taliban, says envoy Thomas West. And now for all the details. India's foreign ministry on Thursday said that there was no immediate plans to evacuate Indian nationals from Ukraine amid tensions with Russia. Foreign ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi in a press briefing said that India was in favor of immediate de-escalation of tensions and the resolution of the issue via sustained diplomatic dialogue. Earlier in the day, India removed the restriction on the number of flights and seats between the country and Ukraine in the air bubble arrangement. India's foreign ministry said on Thursday that there are no immediate plans to evacuate Indian nationals from Ukraine amid the ongoing tension between Russia and the European country. Addressing a weekly presser, foreign ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi said, that no decision has so far been taken by the government on evacuations, adding that the Indian embassy in Ukraine is monitoring the developments there and has issued two advisories so far in this regard. On Wednesday, the Indian embassy in Kyiv said more flights are being planned in the near future to meet the additional demand. On Tuesday, the embassy had advised Indian citizens, especially the students, to leave Kyiv temporarily in view of the uncertainties of the current situation. No immediate evacuation plans, so I, we don't have any special flights. However, as you would have seen, and we have been mentioning this, I think the embassy also mentioned it yesterday, there were a limited number of flights uh, under the air bubble arrangements. Uh, the restriction on the number of flights and the passengers are being removed. I understand so that's a civil aviation ministry issue, of course, and I think I read in the media that it has been removed. Indian carriers are being um, you know, encouraged to operate charter flights between India and Ukraine. The Foreign Ministry spokesperson Bakchi stated that India was in favour of immediate de-escalation of tensions and the resolution of the issue via sustained diplomatic dialogue. Earlier in the day, India's Ministry of Civil Aviation said that it has removed the restriction on the number of flights and seats between India and Ukraine in the air bubble arrangement. Tensions over Ukraine have increased in recent months with Russia and NATO accusing each other of amassing troops on the Russian-Ukrainian border. The United States and Ukraine have accused Russia of preparing to invade. Meanwhile, Moscow denies the claims and maintains that it has no intention of attacking any country. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said the U.S. has hoped that India, which is committed to a rules-based international order, will stand by its side in case of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, which, as per the Biden administration, seems imminent with Moscow adding 7,000 troops to Ukraine's border in recent days. Colleges in Indian capital reopened on Thursday after being shut for almost two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic amid decline in the number of coronavirus cases. Students said they are excited to be back on campus and resume their offline classes. Colleges of the University of Delhi in Indian capital reopened for all the undergraduates and postgraduate courses from Thursday with COVID-19 guidelines after being shut for almost two years due to the pandemic. As per the directive of the university, colleges will resume offline academic activities from Thursday. The reopening of the campus comes amid a decline in the number of COVID-19 cases in the national capital. Earlier this month, student bodies held protests demanding the reopening of the campus. Students said they are excited to be back in campus and resume their offline classes. Some were excited to meet their friends as well as make new ones. Many students attended physical classes for the first time since admission. 
online it was a lot monotonous because we were not attending classes very duly but in offline we are so excited all of my friends are waiting here for me so it's going to be amazing experience colleges must ensure that their classes and campus is sanitized ventilated and all arrangements are made for students coming back to campus delhi reported 766 covid-19 cases along with five fatalities while the positivity rate declined to 1.37% according to data shared by health department on wednesday meanwhile india on thursday reported 30757 new covid-19 cases and 541 deaths in the last 24 hours according to health ministry data with this the country's active case load reached 332918 which is 0.78% of the total covid cases reported so far the recovery rate stood at 98.03%. As the pandemic in the country indicates a sustained downward trend, the central government on Wednesday asked all the states and union territories to review and amend or end additional COVID-19 restrictions. It further asked all the states and UTs to continue monitoring the trajectory of cases on a daily basis and follow five-fold strategy of test, track, treat, vaccination and adherence to COVID-appropriate behavior. In news from Pakistan, amid an unprecedented price hike, Pakistan's science and technology minister Shibli Faraz has advised the public to use as little fuel as possible. Meanwhile, opposition parties have strongly condemned the government for dropping another petrol bomb on the masses as they already grapple with a record high inflation. Pakistan's Federal Minister for Science and Technology Shibli Faraz has advised the people to use as little fuel as possible amid an unprecedented price hike. There has been widespread public outrage after the government on Tuesday notified highest ever hike of rupees 12.03 for petrol and rupees 10 per liter for diesel, citing global oil prices and application of additional petroleum levy. as committed to the international monetary fund for revival of a funding program the minister told reporters on wednesday that life cannot be normal during these tough times as inflation and covid-19 are global issues kuch jo hai to hame jahan tak mumkin ho sake thoda kam fuel istemal karna chahiye aur main samajhta hu kyunki sakh waqt mein yahi hota hai ki zindagi dekhe normal nahi reh sakti hai jab aapki resources na ho aap is qabil na ho ki aap kis kis cheez ko subscribe kare Meanwhile opposition PMLN party president Shehbaz Sharif said the tyrant and corrupt government by exploding the oil bomb on the people is snatching their right to live amid an already record high inflation opposition PPP chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said the days of the puppet regime are over and urged people to join his party's anti government long march rally on February 27 which he said would take into account every robbery committed on the pockets of the people Moving on scores of residents of Yasin district of Gilgit Baltistan recently held a one day hunger strike over frequent load shedding that has continued to afflict their lives raising concern over unequal distribution of electricity the protesters accused Pakistan of meting out a step motherly treatment to the illegally occupied region Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have continued to face innumerable problems owing to prolonged load shedding in the illegally occupied region over the years. Raising concern over unequal distribution of electricity, scores of locals recently held a one-day hunger strike in Yasin district. They complain they have been facing power outages of 22 hours daily, which has further added to the miseries, especially during winters, and over that they have to pay hefty bills. उस मायदे में जो है उन्होंने चार दिन के बाद लोड शेडिंग का हमें वो अमल किया उनका बताया था मंत्रालय मत का लेकिन बदकिस्मती से दो हफ्ते तक दो तीन हफ्ते तक लाइट तो उन्होंने सही दिया उस पर अमल दरामत किया लेकिन अचानक जो है कल से दो दिन तक जो है इन्होंने दो दिन तक इन्होंने वो माहदे के खिलाफ वर्जी की है और दो दिन के बाद बिजली की फरहमी को इन्होंने वो किया है शेड्यूल जारी किया है और बदकस्मती से वो दो दिन भी इस तरह की बिजली दे रहे हैं कि दिन को भी बिजली नहीं होती है और जिस दिन आती है उस दिन भी रात को सही से बिजली नहीं आ रही लोकल्स इन गिलगित बल्दिस्तान to the illegally occupied region failing to develop the infrastructure and leaving them high and dry in news from afghanistan 
The U.S. approach to Afghanistan has altered since the Islamist group took over the country in August last year. As foreign forces withdrew, U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Thomas West in a discussion at the federally funded think tank in Washington on Tuesday gave an overview of how his country and others are supporting the Afghan people during this period of significant transition for the country. The U.S. Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Thomas West, on Tuesday said that Washington is not backing organized armed opposition to the Islamic Emirate and that it would discourage other powers from doing so as well. In a discussion at the U.S. Institute of Peace in Washington on Tuesday, West spoke on prevailing situation in Afghanistan, Washington's recent decision over the fate of seven billion U.S. dollars, Afghan assets, U.S.-Pakistan relations, and Kabul's new rulers. He noted that on Taliban fulfilling their commitments not to allow Afghan territory to be used by foreign terrorists to harm anyone, the dialogue on the subject has become more honest and more candid. The Taliban are sincere in their efforts to contain ISIS-K, he added. We are not supporting organized armed opposition to the Taliban, and we would discourage other powers from doing so as well. I would also tell you, though, that I worry, as um, any student of Afghanistan and of history would, that there is a window uh, uh, where Afghans will make their own decisions, where powers in the regions will make their own decisions um, to begin supporting armed opposition in a, a, a fundamentally more stepped-up way. The envoy clarified the decision made by U.S. President Joe Biden over the fate of 7 billion Afghan assets was meant to protect the assets for Afghanistan. However, the move has drawn a lot of criticism from Afghans, Afghanistan's central bank and the Taliban. The Taliban even warned it would reconsider its policy towards the U.S. if President Biden did not reverse his decision to return only half the amount. On Wednesday, thousands of Afghans came to the streets in capital Kabul, condemning President Biden's executive order for diverting 3.5 billion U.S. dollars from the frozen Afghan assets to the families of the 9-11 terror attacks victims. The demonstrators called on Washington to return the assets of more than 9 billion U.S. dollars to the war-torn country that have been frozen following the Taliban's takeover in mid-August last year. The U.S. freezing of the Afghan central bank's assets is widely seen as a primary factor leading to the current economic crisis and humanitarian disaster in the country. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka has called for a repeal of the controversial PTA, the Prevention of Terrorism Act that gives police sweeping powers to arrest suspects without trial. The Commission in a statement has said notwithstanding the amendments already suggested by the government, such as reduction of detention period and allowing a person detained for 12 months to seek bail, it advocates the PTA's complete abolition. It said that terrorism should be investigated under the general law of the country. The amendments by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's government came ahead of a session of the UN Human Rights Council in March which had last year called for PTA's comprehensive review or repeal. Critics warn the law is being used as a weapon targeting dissidents and minorities, especially after the 2019 Easter bombings, which killed more than 200 people, the Buddhist majority nation's worst attack since the end of civil war in 2009. In a bid to preserve Kaladi Payatu, an ancient martial arts form, a retired policeman has been giving free training of the combat sport to students in India's Kerala state. Over the years, the former cop has trained hundreds of students, including a lot of young girls, who learn it for self-defense. Mohammad Gurukal, a retired sub-inspector of police in the coastal city of Kozukodi in India's southern Kerala state, is giving free training of Kalaripayat, a traditional martial arts form to youngsters. Considered to be one of the oldest martial arts disciplines in the world, this traditional combat form has different techniques including strikes, kicks, grappling and also healing methods. It also involves the use of a sword, shield, spear and dagger. 
വരുന്നുണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് ഇമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി അതുപോലെ തന്നെ പ്രതിരോധ ശക്തി വർദ്ധിക്കുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ കൊറോണേൻ്റെ പ്രശ്നങ്ങളൊന്നും തന്നെ നമ്മൾ കളരി വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടില്ല എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇതിൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ഒരു മേന്മയായിട്ട് ഞാൻ കാണുന്നത് Kalari Payat is not just martial art form but also helps maintain physical fitness. The former corp has trained more than 3000 students over the years and at present around 90 students including a lot of young women are learning from him for self defense. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.